If you're looking to take your coffee game up a notch, latte art is the way to go. It's a fun and exciting way to create beautiful designs in your coffee using milk foam. And the key to success is creating the perfect textured milk. In this video, we'll teach you how to make perfect milk foam and give you a glance at how to make three basic latte art designs. So whether you're a barista or a home coffee enthusiast, be sure to check out this video for all the tips and tricks you need to create beautiful lattes with ease. Let's talk about milk selection. If you want to make latte art, you need to start with the right kind of milk. Whole milk is best because it's more stable and tastes great. You can also use light or non-fat milk, but it's less forgiving if you make a mistake. If you inject too much air, you'll end up with a lot of foam. And for those who are lactose intolerant, don't worry. Lactaid milk would also work just fine. The frothing technique is all about finding the proper steam position relative to the surface of the milk. If you are too low, the milk won't get enough air in. And if you're too high, you'll either get too much air in or make a really big mess. So the idea is to start with the steam tip just below the surface of the milk by one to two millimeters. Then adjust the depth so that you can hear the occasional riffs which indicate small amounts of air being sucked into the milk. Now, whether you want to make a super fine micro foam for a latte or an aerial froth for a traditional cappuccino, the start of the process is the same. You want to get as much air into the milk as soon as possible. This is because the milk will take in air when it's colder. For a fine latte froth, all of the air should be in by the time the outside of the pitcher starts to warm. At this point, you can position the wand a hair deeper into the milk and find a tip position and angle which causes the milk to roll. This rolling really helps break up any larger bubbles and mixes in the milk to create a uniform texture throughout the pitcher. For an aerial cappuccino froth, you can continue sucking in rifts of air for a little longer. You can judge the froth by its expansion in the pitcher. When you get the desired volume, lower the wand into the milk a hair and continue rolling. I recommend steaming to a temperature of about 140 to 150 degrees for best flavor. If you can get much hotter, then you'll lose the texture and the flavor. If you don't have a thermometer, you can hold the milk pitcher to feel the temperature. The general rule of thumb is that if it's too hot for you to hold comfortably, it's probably ready. When you've reached your desired temperature, Shut the steam off with the tip still in the milk. Remove the pitcher, wipe down the wand, and don't forget that final purge to get the residual milk out of the steam wand. After steaming, if you find some larger bubbles, you can knock and swirl the pitcher a few times to help break up and mix them. Since this video is focusing on texturing the milk and pouring latte art, we'll be brief on the espresso extraction. Whether you are using the CM5418, 3700 series, or 5700 series of espresso machine, all of them will give you amazing espresso. And at this time, I'm going to use the 5700 gents. And you can start by grinding your beans. A good rule of thumb is to use about 11 to 13 grams of freshly ground beans for a single shot, and for a double shot, you'll need 18 to 21 grams. Once your beans are ground, tamp them down into the portafilter. Tamping is really important because it helps you extract evenly. If you don't tamp, the water will find the path of least resistance and go straight through leaving you with some of the coffee under extracted. This will give you a nice level surface for evenly distributed water flow. Now we get to the fun part. In this section, I'm going to show you how to create three basic designs, the heart, the tulip, and the rosetta. 
Now, I wouldn't call it easy, but a few tips and some practice, I'm sure you'll be able to create these beautiful designs soon. And once you've mastered these three designs, you'll be able to create any other latte art design with ease. So let's get started. The heart shape is the simplest, the easiest, and the fastest of all the latte art patterns. We start by pouring a small amount of milk into your cup in a circular fashion from a medium height to set up the canvas. Tilt your cup about 45 degrees and hold the pitcher so the tip of the spout is very close to the surface of the milk. Start from the center of the cup and begin to pour at a slow and steady speed. As the cup fills, tilt the cup backwards and the pitcher forwards equally so the drink does not spill. Once a large white circle has formed in the middle and the cup is about 90% filled, lift the milk jug vertically about two inches while still pouring a small stream of milk. At the same time, push the stream of milk forward by moving the jug to the opposite end of the cup to create a line cutting through the center and finishing the heart. The second one we're going to practice is the three stack tulip. The basic idea is to pour three heart-like shapes one after another, then create the stem by pouring through the center of these shapes. Again, pour a small amount of milk into the cup and create a canvas as we did for the heart. Tilt your cup about 45 degrees and hold the pitcher close to the surface of the milk. Start closer to the opposite end of the cup from where your jug is so you'll have more room to work with. Pour the first heart. Stop pouring and lift your jug. Then move your pitcher back and pour another circle, leaving a small space between the circles. And then we're going to stack another heart by slowly pouring inward. When we reach the final heart, we're going to lift the milk pitcher vertically while pouring and then pour through the center, creating a stem with a line of milk. And there we have a tulip. The final pattern we will cover is the rosetta, which is a little more difficult to learn. Everyone's rosetta looks a bit different and there are a couple of ways to achieve the desired look. The main difference between the rosetta is that we're using a wiggle style of pouring motion. Wiggling from side to side to create a base with thin leaves. One tip here is to use thinner milk so the pattern can wrap around the cup a little easier. All right, let's get started. So, we'll start with the canvas just like the heart and tulip mixing in. Next, pour the milk onto an angle into the center or just back from the center of the cup and use a little more height than you would when you're pushing those bulbs in for a heart or tulip. Then start pouring with a wiggle motion. If you've got those angles working correctly for you, you'll see the milk that you push in starts to move around the cup. Continue to wiggle and you'll start to see that the base of that rosetta is forming. At this point, continue your wiggle while pushing back further towards the edge of the cup and then lift up and pull through to finish off the rosetta. And that is it! Latte art is a fun process that takes a lot of practice and dedication to get good at. In order to create beautiful latte art, it is important to infuse your passion into your practice. So, there you go. You now know how to create heart, tulip, and rosetta latte art sure to impress your friends, family, or clients. It's a pretty simple process, but it does take some time and practice in order to get the hang of it. Be sure to experiment with different types of milk, coffee, and technique, and see which combinations you like best. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other videos to learn more about coffee making.